Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to tonight's meeting of the Ridgecrest City Council meeting. I apologize for the delay in my arrival. We're going to call the meeting in order at 5.37 p.m. with roll call. Mayor Bruin? Here. Mr. Roger Rodham? Here. Mr. Heyman? Present. Mr. Here. Four present, four present, uh, one absent with Mr. Blades. I'm going to ask everyone to please stand and join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. Chief? Ready, begin. I, I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Councilman Roger Rutten. Councilman Roger Rutten, I'm sorry. If you would. Lord, thank you for giving us this opportunity to come into your presence, Lord. Thank you for the privilege you have given to us to serve this council. Lord, I pray for our country. I ask for your protection in view of the terrorist attacks. Lord, give us your strength so that we can face the difficult situations, Lord. Lord, I pray for our troops who are in harm's way. Lord, be with us during these proceedings and let the nations we make be useful to this community. In Jesus' precious name I pray. Amen. 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 Kyle's on his way. Okay, next on our agenda this evening is our public comment of items down on the agenda. Persons wishing to address the council on matters that are within the council's jurisdiction and do not already in, appear on the agenda may do so at this time. Each person is asked to limit their comments to five minutes and total public comment time is limited to one hour. Is there any public comment from the floor? Is there any public comment from the phones? Seeing none, we'll go ahead and move to our next, which is our council announcements and direction. I just want to go ahead and uh, first off acknowledge uh, the solemnity of the day. It is uh, September 11th, 2023, 22 years ago today. Um, our world was changed by the events of 9-11. I hope that everyone takes a moment of silence or uh, self-reflection for all those who lost their lives that day and the importance it means in, in reigniting our passion as Americans and our pride in our country. Sir, That's all I have. Before we move on, can we approve the agenda? Did I already, did I just roll right past it? You did. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Goose Fraba. I failed to approve the agenda. Can we go back and approve the agenda, please? I have, do I have any changes to the agenda as presented? If none, do I have a motion for approval of the agenda as presented? <clears throat> motion to approve. I have a motion. Do I have a second? Second. I have a motion and second. Roll call. Mayor Bruin. Aye. Mr. Rajarat. Aye. Mr. Heyman. Aye. Mr. Gorman. Aye. Four ayes. Motion carries. Thank you, sir. I'm, I'm so mad at myself right now. <laughs> I can't even express it. Um, is there any other council announcements or direction? If none, my last one would be uh, everyone in the community is invited to join us at 7 p.m. for a uh, candlelight vigil at the gazebo that's set up outside. Uh, they'll have, uh, I believe, Captain Vaughn is speaking as well as um, they'll be doing um, taps and some um, singing throughout the, in, uh, in memory. Uh, next item is our discussion items. We have two items for discussion. The first item is item number one is a resolution approving the program supplement agreement number F049 with the State of California Department of Transportation for the construction and construction engineering needed for the overlay of West Ward Avenue between Norma Street and Down Street and authorizing the city manager Ron Strand to sign this, the program supplement. Mr. Reed. Uh, good evening, Council. First of all, thank you guys for making this special meeting happen. Um, with the city manager's conference next week, well, we're not going to be able to be here to uh, award the program supplement or the following item. Um, so what, we, what you have in front of you tonight is uh, a basic agreement with the Federal Highways Administration in the state of California, which is providing us with $1,088,192 towards the construction of Phase 2 of Ward Avenue. It's a standard agreement, one in which we've signed numerous times for RSTP funds. And with that, I'm open for any questions. And I also would just like to note that this project was actually scheduled to be done um, in fiscal year 25, but we got it moved up and would like to try to get the construction done this year. And as we all know, 
The weather is changing, so time is of the essence. Time is of the essence is a good line. Okay, we'll go ahead and start with any council discussions. Are there any questions from the council? None. The money's in good hands. Uh, is the matching fund amount going to change when we get the bids? Yes, so the matching funds will change. The matching funds were based off of an estimate um, that was done at the time of us going after the grant. Um, so basically in this stipulation, it just tells you that the most that they will provide is 1,088,192. Anything that's remaining, we have to cover with matching funds. Do we have to say that in the resolution or? So we do not have to say that in the resolution because we are approving the contract at the moment that is a generalized contract that's basically telling us that this is what we assume the matching funds to be and that anything else we will cover with in-house or local money. Okay, thank you. And is there a hesitation there from the city clerk? Well, just because it says the city's matching fund yeah. are 905000 doesn't say approximate or up to or anything, so I'm just fearful that... Correct. It says they are because it's based off of the grant value and the 83.15%, so in order for us to use all the funds, that's the minimum match that we that's would have to provide. That's the minimum match. Should, should the terminology I really reflect? I think the terminology is different. So, that, so, so should we put minimum or something in there? How would you want it's, that worded? It's the identical one that we've passed for the last seven RSTP projects we've done. We or we can use the same verbiage which you used in the presentation. You said R as determined once bits are received. Correct. So we can add that. We can add, we can add to it, like I said, all we are doing is approving the grant amount and what the stipulated local match would be based off the grant amount that we asked for. That's what the local, how the local match is determined for the program supplement. Yeah, the local match has, it's a percentage. Correct. So it has to equal 100%. Correct. Now and our it, match may be greater than that amount, but correct. that is what the amount is. It has is. to be at least that amount. Right. Okay. Correct, it would have to be at least that amount or, or, or if we, delete from the project and we don't end up using, like if it's 88% of a million, right? We would get 880,000, so our local match would then be 220, right? It's, it's, it's telling you that based on what we said the project would cost, this is the amount we're eligible, this is what the local match would be based off that calculation. And then there's a stipulation in the contract that says anything over this amount will not be covered by the grant and is subject to local funds. And so would we, we uh, be bringing it back to the council for approval of additional? No, no, no funds? sir, not the actual contract. The contract has the language in it. And once we sign the contract, we can add money to the project as we see fit. So when, what you guys will hear next is the actual award, which will have what our total matching funds will be for the total project and where we're taking the funds from. Okay. Are there any other questions on the resolution? We're satisfied. Do I have a motion for approval of the, re I'm sorry, is there any member of the public which would like to make comment? Anybody on the phones? Hearing none, I'll bring it back to council. Do I have a motion for approval of item number one, a resolution approving the program supplement agreement number F049? I make a motion. Second. I have a motion and second, roll call. Mayor Bruin. Aye. Mr. Blades. Aye. Mr. Rajaratnam. Aye. Mr. Heyman. Aye. Mr. Gorman. Aye. Five ayes. Motion carries. Next item is item number two, which is a resolution to accept the base bid for Schedule A and B as submitted by Griffith Company to allocate Measure V and drainage impact funds and up to $203,639.50 for a 10% contingency, a maximum total of up to 2.24 zero 
million award a construction contract to Griffith Company to construct the West Ward Avenue Phase Two Street Re Rehabilitation Project, Federal Project Number STPL fifty three eight eighty five zero seven five for two million thirty six thousand three hundred ninety five dollars, and award a professional services agreement with Wildan Engineering in the amount of one hundred forty five thousand dollars to provide construction engineering services for the project and authorize the city manager Ron Strand to execute the contract and agreement. Mr. Reed. So this is our second phase of ward. This is to complete uh, the, the project in which we've already started, which Everlevel has completed and we're in project closeout. Uh, that was between um, China Lake Boulevard and Norma. The reason why we are asking for contingency funds is we are doing storm drain work. We added storm drain work after our storm. We saw, not after our storm, but we knew we had problems with those storm drains over there from previous inspections. And we have included that within this project. It is funds that are not a part of the grant, and I'm that worded that horribly, but they are basically gonna be local funds that are gonna come from our drainage impact fee to remediate all the storm drain because they're not covered by the regional service transportation program. Uh, we received three bids. Um, they were all relatively close. Um, Griffith Company was the low bidder um, at the time of bidding as well as after a complete bid analysis was done. Um, it's 2.2% over the engineer's estimate. So either we're getting way better at guessing or we're starting to know what things cost. I do have to fall on my sword a little bit here. I uh, budgeted for local match and I budgeted for construction engineering, but I did not budget for the project. Um, we have money sitting in the Measure V reserves for this project. We've all known it's coming for some time. Um, so therefore, if you'll notice, it says in there that I need to allocate the money for the construction budget and have Ms. Fries um, update our budget to show revenue and the expenditures for the project. And that's because of my failure to budget for the project. Um, we have already completed all the preliminary engineering, as I said, that was paid for in previous fiscal years. If you look in my staff report, I have it completely outlined based on what's coming from Measure V, what's going to come from drainage impact, and then what the total addition to the budget is. Um, with that, if anybody has any questions, I'm open to take them. So the project missing is the 145000 No, no, no. The project missing is the total actual project to do the work. So we didn't show the revenue of 1,088,000 and we did not show the 1.9 or, or 900,000 that's gonna come from Measure V or the 432 from the drainage impact in the budget. So all in all, everything said and done out the door, we're looking at coming up with about 50% of the project cost because of what we added. I'm going to let some other people ask some questions while I think for a moment. Any, uh, any other questions? Yeah, real quick, if you don't mind, Travis. Uh, so does this put, put the, um, you have a plan, I know you have a plan for the next five years for other roads need to be done. Does it delay some of those roads? Yeah. Does, I'm sorry, say that again? Does, it, does this delay some of those roads because you've had to? No, sir. This does not delay anything. As I said, we knew this project was coming. We asked to have it advanced. We got it advanced a year. Um, it's been in the works. We've been, we tried to roll it to where we could do it right after, but we had to wait on some right-of-way certifications and some other things to come through from Caltrans before we could do this because it is grant-funded for a majority of it. It um, falls under a completely different set of rules. There's a lot more paperwork that we have to do to prepare for it. But it should not impact our uh, five-year plan. The five-year plan, as we all know, we're just about done with all the paving. They're wrapping those up. They probably should wrap it up by the end of next week. And then we are already off and running on developing a new five-year plan and um, getting the parts necessary for the slurry machine to try to finish out the slurry, which is all we have left on our current five-year plan. So, I mean, uh, go ahead, Solomon, if you have any questions. Oh, go ahead. I'm just, I mean, a $900,000 variance in the budget is not. That amount yeah. would have been there regardless if we would have put it in the budget. <clears throat> I mean, the money's sitting in a holding account for Measure V. And that's, only, that's fine. And Measure yeah. V has plenty to support that? Correct. Yeah, the only, the only thing was is that we just didn't budget it 
in this year's budget. The money was there. We just didn't. You said allocate it. We just didn't allocate the money. We just didn't allocate. That's all I'm just making yeah, we sure. Just, we just didn't allocate the money. Because I know we were bleeding down Measure V. We, we were on purpose, and, and Travis had actually got Measure V all the way down to, like, close to zero. Right, and that's where my and nervousness is coming into play. Yep. It, included budget, it included budgeting for this project in all my So your Measure V, essentially what, and, and apologies ahead of time, I'm in a weird a little reconcile because I just got, I'm in reconcile mode from the day job, is... You had reconciled this project in your Measure V expectations in your reporting and what you were communicating to the council as, as it related to Measure V budget reserves and budget, but it was not physically included in the budget. So, yes. So when I did my calculation to show how much extra we could spend to add back into FY22 Measure V, uh -huh. I had already looked at what we needed for Ward. I knew we needed roughly... 1.5 million so we made sure we had that nest egg sitting there and I was not going to touch that because I knew this project was coming and we were getting a million of it funded. So what was communicated was taken into account. What was printed was not. Correct. I just okay. didn't put the line item that showed the revenue and what the expenditure for the actual construction would have been into the budget. Okay. And as we all saw because we haven't closed all of our projects yet the actual Measure V and the Measure V report the actual reserve amount went up. Yes. Because none of those projects have closed. Correct. Yet. That's why I was just double checking that. And that was because that's also a year, a year behind, and, Correct. and so on and so forth. And I just want to make sure that that's what we're talking about. Here. We're not actually talking about something new on the budget line. This is just we, we were allocating in our brains and our conversations and in all of our communication. We just simply had not put the line item on the budget. Correct. Okay. I just did not put it in to show the then I'm, then revenue I'm, or the okay. expense. Then I'm satisfied. Okay. Yeah, the major view sits in a holding account. Separate, right? right. Uh, but I also know that we had we had been moving Measure V south. So my my brain is well. Didn't we already spend out Measure V, and now we're tacking on? Is that going to affect future projects? Which is exactly what Kyle's no, question was. So. No. Okay. No. Should. Obviously, we're going to do the project, but I just want to make sure what the the, the other impacts were. Um, I have no other comments, Doc. Skip. I have none. Okay. Now I will say this: there will be one impact. The one impact is you will not see the amount of roads get done that you saw this year because we will go back to our standard one million to one point five million dollar project. We yeah, won't we be expected doing a, that. Yeah, we won't be doing a five million dollar project every year. Right, we expected that. Though. Yeah, that was that. Yes. What I'm what I was really more worried about is that we're robbing the future to pay for the present. We are not, and we're not doing that. No. So, as if, as long as that's not the case, and we're not. Reallocating measure V funds that we're hoping to get or something to that effect, and that's good. So, um, I have. Uh, is there any member of the public that has any comments? And I'm going to bring it back. Bring it right back. Seeing none, I'll bring it back to council. Councilman, um, there are a lot of numbers here, Mr. Travis Reed. Fiscal impact, you said two million fifty one one seventy seven. Which do you have the breakdown of that? You don't have to give me right now. Or you can give it later on. Which if you can. which which number are you in the staff at? report second page? I think staff report second page. So you're talking about so the total fiscal impact two million fifty one thousand one seventy seven sixty. Second page, first page, second page. Project for Measure V. Which can you give me a little point me in the right direction because I'm not seeing what you're talking about on the second page of the staff report. I'm not seeing it either. Maybe I have. I'm looking at something different. Is it, is it the third page? I had bits and pieces. Yeah, see, I don't, I don't think that's the, this is the, the, the staff report we're looking at. Okay. Where do you see the fiscal impact? I don't know. Okay, never mind. Maybe there's a... It's probably on the, for the other project then. So the total expected expenses are 2028000 There's a... Correct. So the two million fifty one thousand is the total expected expense for just the project, for just the construction side, not for um, 
CE and PE, and if you go back through everything I did in the staff report, that's the total cost of the project altogether. Okay. So. Okay, I have one more question. Um, on the consult in the consultant agreement, you said it is for phase one project. I think this should be phase two project, right? In in the where? Oh, in the consultant agreement, agreement, phase two. Oh, yeah, I missed adding a, a, a two to number under number one purpose. Yeah. yeah. And I can amend that before Ron signs the contract <coughs> if that's agreeable. Okay. Thank you. So we have one small amendment, which is the wording of phase two, correct? Okay. Is there any other comments or questions? If not, I will call for a motion of the approval of the resolution to accept the base bid for schedule A and B as submitted with the addendum, with the, with the uh, change to add phase two in as requested. Move to approve. I have a motion. Do I have a second? Second. I have a motion and a second. Roll call. Mayor Bruin? Aye. Mr. Blades? Aye. Mr. Rajaratnam? Aye. Mr. Heyman? Aye. Mr. Gorman? Aye. Five ayes. Motion carries. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Reed. Thank you guys Thank again you, for sir. this special meeting. Greatly appreciate it. So it saves us time to get this done. I, I, I don't mind meetings that get stuff done. <laughs> As opposed to some other meetings. Um, do we have any other mayor or council comments? I'll start with Skip and we'll go down the road. I can offer a comment. You may. Our little family watched uh, with interest the uh, tennis open in New York. We followed and found most interesting the ladies half of that championship where a young shy teenager named Coco Goff um, managed to transcend everything and inspire us by winning. It was something indeed to see. And there's a sign above the hallway as you enter that massive Arthur Ashe Stadium that caught my attention, though the camera only briefly touched on it, and it said, quote, pressure is privilege, unquote. Billie Jean King. An amazing statement uh, uh, and a deep one. Uh, something that uh, I'll think about uh, over the next three years as I graduate from your freshman councilman here. That's it. Thank you, sir. Mr. Doc. No comments. Solomon. Um, I think the 9-11 parade and the ceremony, they were very touching. So it's good to see so many community members getting involved in that. And uh, thanks to the organizers for uh, taking care of this event. I appreciate that. Thank you. Yep, the parade was beautiful. I was glad to be there. It was a privilege to be a part of it. I appreciate everybody that showed up. And uh, we had a lot of city staff out there that did a lot of work. Um, afterwards, I, I saw the Parks and Rec guys doing a lot of work. The police were all over the place. So. All that's always much appreciated. It's a very solemn occasion, solemn event. Um, there's a lot of gravity that goes along with it, but uh, all that aside, I, I appreciate the uh, I appreciate everybody's involvement. Um, I'll just uh, thank you, Kyle. I'll, I'll echo the same thing. It was a pleasure to always. Uh, it's always a pleasure to be in a community event like that where you get to see such patriotism. It's a solemn day, but it's a it's such a patriotic event for our community that. I, I, words don't express it. But I also want to just say again, thank you to the parents who brought their children out, their children who have no idea what 9-11 is and, and, and teaching them the importance of it and having them participate in, in patriotic displays like that. They, they, do, they do resonate. Um, uh, I think that it's one of the unique things that makes Ridgecrest Ridgecrest. And with that, I will wish you all a wonderful evening. We'll see you here next Wednesday on the 16th for our regular council meeting. Have a great night.